This is a game I spectated yesterday on GoQuest. White is one of the top players on GoQuest. They are currently ranked four on the leaderboard. And just to give a little more idea of how strong that is, they have a win rate of around 80%, and they once went 70 games in a row without losing a single game. Of course, being at the very top, they mostly play weaker players, but still it's not easy to so consistently win against weaker players. And we're going to see that in this game, they're playing someone about 300 points lower rated, but it's still going to be a very close game. So we have this opening. Uh, a common choice here for white is to hunt underneath and just settle groups on both sides. But it's also possible to hunt uh, on this side and sacrifice the e7 stone in this way. Instead of immediately capturing, um, black pushes here first to get a little bit more. And this is very interesting because in this position it's actually possible for white to capture the three stones. There's a common to Suji here which is very good to know about. If white goes down here, black is reduced to two liberties, and even by capturing the h8 stone there's no way for black to gain more liberties. So black can Atari, white will extend the stone, and Atari, throw in, connect here, and we can see still here if black tries to take liberties from the outside, white will just Atari and capture. If black makes an eye, black is still kept down to two liberties, and he's going to die. Uh, so this this really comes up a lot on 9 by 9 it's very good to know about uh, this. Um, it's kind of a variant of the tombstone to Suji. But in this position, it's actually not good for white to go for it. Even though it is possible to capture three stones, it's not a good idea, which is pretty interesting. So even though it guarantees the capture of the three stones, what's going to happen is at the end here, at this point, black doesn't have to save these three stones. Uh, oh, sorry, white will throw in once like this. Black doesn't have to save these stones. Instead, black is going to push here, and white can capture the three stones. See, black can't connect here, but black will just connect out with the main part of the group, uh, like this. And white only got half an eye here. Uh, we can see white can make one eye by connecting g8, but if black captures g8 in the future, that will falsify the eye. So white has to save this group, which allows black to quite severely attack the other group. So this is not a good result for, for white. Uh, I find that pretty cool that uh, you would think in this position that if it's possible to capture these three stones, it has to be pretty good, but it's, it would actually be a losing mistake. So, of course, white knows this, so white instead backs off and connects like this. Um, black pushes here, and white chooses this time to decide that, okay, I'm no longer going to go for this to switch, so I'm going to get this sent instead, connect here. It's an interesting timing because it seems weird to ignore the f5 move, but Black cannot continue here, white would be happy to capture three stones, and the stones on the lower side can uh, make life either to the right or to the left, they're going to be fine. So black has to respond, white gets to connect, and now we're kind of into the end game here. Yeah, we just have divided the board into two parts. White plays this end game move, the very common end game to Suji, where the idea is that we can give up this one stone, but we get the Atari on top and Atari here. And what's kind of neat here is that black doesn't have a cut on d4 because of uh, the e7 stone still having some RG, we see black can't connect here. Um, so instead black goes for this cut, thinking that, okay, let's say white kind of plays this Atari for instance, then black having this Atari would allow black to cut here. Um, so instead of responding directly to that move, white just captures here, takes the points. A pretty brave move because this is not directly responding to, to this, so you have to read out what happens in this capturing race. Um, and yeah, it's kind of scary. So white goes down here, black jumps. We see white is not really alive on, on either side. Um, of course, this group is mostly fine. It has the B4 follow-up, but it's mainly these two groups on the right that are in a fight to the death. Uh, white plays here, and Hane to reduce the liberties. And at this point, black kind of gives up on saving this and plays Atari, just takes this stone, which was the you know the initial goal here to of the cut, to just get this Atari and cut. But white already got this capture, so this is actually a success for white. So there was actually mistakes by both sides here. Let's go back a few moves. At this point, black had a very cool Tsuji, which would have caused trouble to white. So black could play here. 
uh, threatening to live. If black gets to play h1, that would be two eyes, uh, like this. So white has to stop that. And then black can throw in here. And this j2 h1 exchange makes it very hard for white to connect back to, to these two stones. And we can see if white tries something like this, white is going to get squeezed and just die with everything. So that's the magic of this exchange. You know, in center, black can kind of prevent the connection. And there's kind of a co up here, but white cannot gain an eye. Uh, so there's no extra eye up here, and still, if white goes for this, it's just going to get squeezed, and everything is going to die. So this would be real trouble for white, um, but black, luckily for white, didn't find this move. So what white needed to do to prevent that surgery was, at this point, to take the same vital point, and now white would be okay. And there are multiple variations here. It could actually, I, th I think in some of these variations, it can end in... Um, in Seki, between this group and this group, because it's possible for this group to make one eye and this group to make one eye. Um, but white is okay with a Seki if white then gets sent to play b4, white would still be winning on points. So that's also good for white. Uh, so what would actually happen here is that black would just, um, at some point, get white would switch, black would switch back to get the endgame points, and uh, I think it would be a draw. Okay, so let's go back to look at what happened in the game. Uh, this one, so black got this cut, uh, white gets this big end game now, the b1 Hane, which is sent to capture three stones. And white still needs to be a little bit careful, you know, this group is not, not alive, but because of this group, this black stone's not having many liberties, it's going to be okay. Uh, so black makes some exchanges inside there, but you can see it's not possible for black to, to live, or to even cause any trouble. So. In the end position, uh, it's white winning by two points. So you can see it was, yeah, white just barely eked out the win, which is quite cool to see. So it's interesting, like, even uh, these very top players, they still can make a mistake every now and then, but they're able to so consistently beat, uh, beat weaker players. Yeah, hope you found this game interesting. Thank you for watching.